I just found a nice piece of gold and it looks like it's stuck in the rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna need a bit of a, a bit of a break. My face is frozen. <laughs> Good afternoon everybody. Welcome to the channel if you're new to it. My name is Polly. Today we're going to be doing something that we haven't done in a while and that's to hunt for gold underwater. Now I said this in my last video but there was a major flood that ripped through here and it changed the layout down there. So I'm hoping it changed the layout under the water and maybe expose some new spots to find some candy. The tools we're using today is my mask and snorkel, a scratcher tool, the gold sucker and even some spare gloves for when I rip my first pair. Which happens every Tim. So let's make our way down to the warm cozy water. Piece of cake! Piece of cake! Right here looks like a good camp. Um, we're gonna get changed and then get in the water. Okay, so this is where we find out if there's any holes in our suit. There's holes in my feet. So what you will be seeing me do a lot is wave at the gravel. Now this is called fanning and it's an easy way to blow away the light gravels exposing anything heavy, like gold, sitting on the bedrock underneath. And since gold is heavy, it's common to find it in the cracks and crevices in their bedrock. Our plastic gold sucker is able to suck up any little piece we find, but we're looking for the pieces that don't fit in the straw. If you get lazy or can't reach, use one of your upside down arms. I know I'm annoying, but when you find gravel that's much harder to fan like this, that usually means it hasn't moved in a long time, which could also mean there could be an accumulation of gold or other treasures underneath. This is what you call a picker, a little piece you could probably pick up with your fingers. And a piece of iron. I found a place behind an obstruction where the water was still. These low pressure spots are a good place to look too.
<laughs> the gold ain't very big, but it will add up the longer I freeze myself. So I'm gonna stop talking and just show you the rest of the gold that I found before our first warm up break. <laughs> It's only a few minutes for you guys is about four hours for me. I can't even, I can't even feel my face. My face is frozen! <laughs> oh, I'm gonna need a bit of a, a bit of a break. It's absolutely numbing here. I can't even feel my face. <laughs> They're probably mumbling, <laughs> mumbling. <laughs> I have vertigo. So anytime I get water uh, in my ears, I get super dizzy. I blame that to why I fall all the time, but. So we're gonna make our way downstream now. We don't have a lot of daylight left. We're gonna go down there and see what we could find and then hopefully warm up before I lose feeling in other places. Yeah, I didn't fall. <laughs> I found a lot of nuggets here before. But not this year. Only one nugget this year so far. So if you ever want to cross the river and you're in your wetsuit, you're never going to be able to cross straight on because of the current. So if you want to land straight ahead, you're going to have to cross ahead of like upstream. I noticed a little piece of gold almost right away. Unfortunately, I had to put the camera down in order to suck this one up. Moving away from the current, more easy pieces of candy. I just found a nice piece of gold and it looks like it's stuck in the rock. <laughs> Nice. 
Got a little guy. This spot is actually proving to be pretty good. I started using my upside down arms more often because my hands were frozen and it's starting to get deep. So I'm thinking I'm just going to return with my scuba gear. So I'm gonna call it a day. I'm just gonna quickly dump, dump out the snuffer bottle and show you what we got and then we're gonna go home get warmed up, have something to eat, and then just see how much we got in terms of weight. I'm hoping over two grams, that'll be nice. Can't feel anything. <laughs> Alrighty. Oh. <laughs> Look at all that candy. I have rocks in here to weigh down the snuffer bottle so it doesn't float away. But just quickly, there's some candy right in there. Nice pieces of gold. Well, I'll save the close up for a second. I gotta hurry up and get changed and get out of here. I'm cold and hungry. So I'll see you back at the house in one second. <laughs> so not a bad time out there at all. Now I wasn't able to film every piece that I found exclusively because of the positions I put myself in, but nonetheless, we did find some candy. I am tickled with this. I would call this a good day. Our two bigger bits include this roly poly piece that was about four feet underwater and the flattest piece I think I've ever found, which kind of looks like Africa. Now for the weigh in. Are we able to pay our bills? Starting with our roly poly piece. I'm gonna guess around a gram, maybe more. 0.86 grams. Okay, now let's weigh our Africa piece. A gram. Ah, 0 0.60, that's still good. All right, now both of them together is over a gram. Yep. Now for the rest of the stuff. I could have done a better job doing that, but whatever. Three point seven two grams. That's actually a lot more than I thought. <gasps> it's a little piece of gold right there. Four ounces. Nope. Three point seven two. <laughs> so we beat two grams, which was today's goal. But hopefully, we'll be able to triple, quadruple that number now that the river is slow enough for us to start scuba diving again because the bigger candy lies deeper. If you enjoyed this video, chances are you're going to enjoy what's ahead, so please subscribe if you haven't already, and feel free to join our community down in the comments, but I warn you, we have some piranhas down there. Also, if you wanna see anything else extra, I do have a Facebook and Instagram for you to follow if you want. That is it for me, thank you for watching, thank you so much for your support, and until the next one, I will see you later. Medic.